Welcome to Big Blend Radio's California Sequoia Country Show, home to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks, Giant Sequoia National Monument and Sequoia National Forest, and the charming historic agricultural communities that make up Tulare County. Welcome, everybody. It is fall, you all, but I'm on the southeast uh, section of the country, so I can say you all, but we're not going to be in the southeast. Today, we are going to California's beautiful Sequoia country, which is Tulare County, home to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks, Giant Sequoia National Monument, and the Sequoia National Forest, and all kinds of super cool communities that you're going to want to visit this fall to really, I mean, you're talking about America's breadbasket. So when you think about pumpkins and you think about fruits and vegetables and all those nuts and all those just yummy, delicious foods that you want to have for fall, guess where they come from? Yes. Oh, and did I mention dairy? So a lot of cheeses, you know, when we're thinking about our holiday plates this year, um, yeah, cheese needs to be on there. I'm just saying. And ice cream never goes out of season. I don't care how cold it is. Ice cream can come into wherever I am and I will eat you. <laughs> anyway, we have some great guests joining us from Sequoia Tourism Council. We do this show every first Thursday to keep you up to date with what's going on in the region. And the best website to go to is discoverthesequoias.com. All the links uh, for the websites of the destinations we're talking about today are in the episode notes as well. But first, let's start off with Donette Silver Carter. She is from the Tulare Chamber of Commerce, the president and CEO. How are you, Donette? I am doing great, Lisa. I hope you're doing well. I know you guys are having yeah. some travel challenges. All the We want to make sure we're keeping top of mind, sending good vibes to all those people who have been impacted with um, some of the weather challenges here in our community. All we have is a little warm weather for this fall. So we're kicking yeah. off fall with warm weather continuing <laughs> and it's just beautiful here. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I love that you do get a changeover of colors in the trees and everything um, in the Sequoia region. So Tulare County, it's beautiful in the fall. Um, the oaks are out there, the oak trees, the giant sequoias, which we're going to get to. Um, but it's a beautiful thing. And I did think of you all because we were doing a episode that everyone stay tuned for uh, Saturday show. Um, you know, Linda Kassam, uh, Diva Linda Kassam, I think Suzanne, Ooh, you've met yeah. her. And, and Donette, you know her too. And we did a show uh, from Melissa's Specialty Produce, and they are the uh, largest specialty produce distributor in the country. And so they sent us each a box of produce. And lo and behold, what sticker is on the squash that we got? To Larry. And oh, I'm like... Super Our friends cool. sent us food <laughs> and I, and I made some squash from Tulare last night. I'm just telling you, we got a taste of home. <laughs> yes. well, Tulare County, we do feed the world. We are right in the middle of agriculture. We are an ag haven and the largest, um, you know, ag producer around with over 200 and some crops and right around 95 crops that we sent outside of the country. So wow. if you're looking for ag or you want to see cows Learn about all the different types of trees and blossoms in the spring. Tulare County is the place to come. You can definitely experience mm -hmm. agriculture. Ah, it's awesome. And I'd say fall is a good time. And speaking of agriculture, we've got to bring Heath Jones back on the show from Dinuba Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Heath, uh, you guys had a very festive weekend, right? Um, talking about raisins, which is part of Dinuba's fame, right? Yep. So we just got done with our Raisin Day Festival um, and it was a huge hit, uh, but four days of us wow. all celebrating and um, and I'm a little I'm a little worn down today, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so the raisins, isn't that historically part of Dinuba's claim to fame, right? Are the raisins, yeah. but now it's really mostly grapes, right? And you've got yeah. like Naylor's yeah. uh, farm as well with peaches and, you know, all those kinds of deliciousness. Yeah, we're definitely an agricultural community um, and we might not be heavy in the raisins anymore, but but we definitely, it's still part of our history and we're still here to celebrate that. Uh -huh, cool. And you know what? We did get grapes from your area. Actually, now that I think part of our specialty delivery were these delicious grapes and there were three kinds. And so, yeah, we got a taste of Dinuba. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. Suzanne Bianco is back from Visit Visalia. How are you doing, Suzanne? Hi, good morning. Doing great. Good, good. Now, what about we're talking about agriculture, but Visalia, you know, you're the county seat. You also have a lot of citrus around you. Is that predominant like citrus and olives in your backyard, would you say? 
Well, since we're sort of, yeah, we're sort of in the middle of the county and surrounded by all sorts of deliciousness. Um, the nuts to the north, we've got the stone fruit up by uh, you, Heath, got a lot of uh, uh, stone yeah. fruit, peaches, nectarines, all of those sorts of things. Are you and... calling me nuts, Suzanne? <laughs> yeah, it, we are yeah. recording this on a Monday morning, everybody. So I'm yeah. just saying, give us all some grace, period. <laughs> I think we were saying that like between Visalia and the park gate are like 17 different crops that you you pass right on the highway. That's not even exploring the rest of the county, but just along the highway itself, mm. which is pretty amazing. Mm. So. Oh, I do want to give a shout out to Woodlake Botanical Gardens for folks mm. to go there because it's like a demonstration garden for, you know, also for locals to figure out what they can grow. Mm. Um, they have like berries and fruits and sunflowers and roses and all kinds of things, but it really gives you an idea in this beautiful garden of what is grown in the county. And then you see the mountains in the backdrop. It's, it's gorgeous. And yeah. it's also by Bravo Lake where you can actually see little birds and waterfowl and stuff. So if you like birds, it's a good thing to go to. Um, I want to go up into Sequoia National Park. We've got Holly Brown back on the show from the park, Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. So we're going from agriculture to giant trees. I mean, I know they do these giant um you know, vegetable contests like the giant pumpkin and the giant squash. But Holly, I think you guys are winning out right in the parks with the giant trees. Yeah, I think we are winning uh, with the largest tree in the world right here in Sequoia National Park. We mm -hmm. also have the second largest tree in the world in Kings Canyon National Park. So we're we're up there. Yeah. And it's not it's not necessarily about the height. Right. Even though they really are do get really tall and have a very right. thin root system, which is wild to me, I, you know, but um, isn't it just like it, it's the largest organism in by volume, mass. right? By yep, mass, that's not right. just tree, yep. by like actual organism. Yeah, so once the sequoias um, reach their maximum height, they're just like people, we get so tall and then we start growing outwards. And so that's how <laughs> our trees grow. Listen, I just turned 50 and I'm gonna tell you you're 100% right. <laughs> <laughs> it makes exactly. us all feel better, it's all natural. Yeah. It's, it's okay. That's what I keep telling myself. And you know, I keep talking about ice cream. Well, yeah, well, and, and it makes me feel good. So that's okay. Now that's in the right. parks, you know, the sequoias, you, when we talk about fall colors, I'm just going to say, look at the actual trunks of the sequoias, those colors. And then when you get into some snow and you never know, you guys might get snow at the end of October. You never know. You've got that right. beautiful white snow and that cinnamon color of the tree trunks. But there are areas where you get fall colors, right? In, in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. Yeah, there are. There's, there are areas that we get fall colors. Um, the sequoias kind of stay the same, but it's still a beautiful time just to explore. The park is kind of quieting down a little bit. So for me, really the joy of fall is that things are calming down. We get that crisp air. So while you're mm -hmm. out there nature everything just feels really good and the smells are kind of amplified I think in the crisp air so it's really a great time to just immerse yourself in the forest mm. and also when I was hiking through there like you're saying it's really beautiful to see the changes and in, in colors and everything too but um, this is the time of year where we went hiking in um, Crescent Meadow and I, I, I always want to say Paradise Meadow because that's kind of how I feel about it. And right. Nancy and I stumbled across a mama bear and her cubs and they mm -hmm. you know, shoot away, but we could hear them and don't follow them or try to take a selfie. I just always have to say that because we don't need more statistics. Um, but the they were making this scratching sound in the forest. We're like, what is this? And you could hear these like booms, bangs in the forest. We're like, what is a sequoia tree coming down? You know, we know that can happen, <laughs> you know, but it yeah. turns out this, these were the bears scratching for grubs. So for hikers, they might want to be aware of this. I mean, that's the beauty of, you know, dead trees provide nutrition, right? For wildlife. Yeah, that's right. And wildlife, wildlife is probably in there foraging around right now. It's a great time to try and catch some wildlife and see what's going on and just be really aware when you're out there. Um, I know some hikers may be nervous about bears, but um, we here have black bears, so they're not very aggressive. Um, if you do come across a bear, just enjoy seeing them and don't get too close and make sure you keep your food really close to you. Another important thing about bears is just making sure that if you are picnicking or if you're still staying in one of the campgrounds that's open to store that food away so that the bears don't try to come and get that food. And that keeps okay. everybody safe. 
Yeah, or just eat the food like I do. <laughs> that's, right. that's the way to go. So let's talk a little bit about actual activities in the communities. Um, so Donette, you want to start with some events happening in Tulare. Oh, um, and, or do we want to talk about shopping first? Which one? <laughs> you know, I like both of those topics. So I'm an event junkie, as I call myself, and probably a shopaholic. So, hey, I can go either direction. But um, <laughs> Uh, absolutely. As far as the events, though, I'd really like to do a little focus in on that. Um, we have Crush Party that's happening October 11th. That is a large wine and food event. We hold that out at our College of the Sequoias campus in Tulare, which truly is located in the heart of ag with all kinds of trees around it. It's really a great venue. We're out of doors. We have over 50 various different vendors that will be pouring wines. Uh, we have some brews, specialty cocktails, and a lot of food. So everything that you can even imagine under the sun, you're going to have a chance to get to taste the flavors of our region. So we're super excited uh, to be preparing for that event. We also have music and a silent auction. So just a great casual evening to be out and about and to enjoy With the bounty wine. of the and yes, with wine and our wines um, do extend. The food is with it is countywide, but our wines do um, extend over into uh, the coastal regions as well. So we have wines from all over and then all over um, Central California, too. So as okay, you can imagine, cool. with about 20 different wine um, vendors. So very excited okay. to get that going. Of course, in our community, you know, as it's going to be the Halloween holiday and harvest air um, festivals. We have all of those kinds of events happening from Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee, which is in our downtown mm -hmm. area. Fun, free event for all of the families to come out cool. to. And then of course we have harvest festivals in our region and we have car shows. We have a car show coming up very soon at one of our schools. So a lot of different activities to keep people busy. And then the most exciting part is we are going to see the very first concert happening at our brand new Adventist Amphitheater, which is located in Zumwalt Park. This is a multi-million dollar project upgrade. We will actually be able to have a capacity of 5,000 people in this wow. park, right in the heart of our downtown Tulare. And there's a lot of renovation going on in downtown Tulare. So this is part of what we're doing to bring people into our community. And we're going to kick that off on October the 26th with our first concert being Clay Walker. And cool. it's I'm so excited. We can't wait to finish and do that ribbon cutting on the facility to see the first concert. And then we'll have multiple concerts uh, for, I think it's four weeks in a row. And then the season kind of gets quiet because the weather change. But it's mm. going to be a lot of excitement during that uh, month period of time as we introduce a lot of concerts and actually showcase this new facility that's in our area. So, you awesome. know, with, like I said, a lot of other little small, you know, craft shows and pop up events, those things that are happening that we're seeing throughout the community. So a lot to keep people busy when they come in. And if that's not enough shopping at those festivals and pop ups. <laughs> Definitely, you want to hit our downtown area. We have some new offerings there, both um, along the lines of food and shopping. And of course, we have our Tulare Outlets, which has all types of different national brands yeah, that are okay. there. And when you're ready to um, take a little break, you go and put your feet up, you grab a glass of wine at Galaxy Theater, and you watch a movie. They have those fabulous reclining chairs so it's you know better than being in your home for sure you know in your own recliner they they've got the recliner there ready for you they've got your popcorn ready they have a bar if that's what you want to take advantage of so just a great way to spend some time enjoy some shopping and enjoy a rest afterwards and then head on over to bravo farms which is adjacent you know for dinner when you before you go oh, home you know perfect. a lot to do but yeah shopping one of my favorite topics i could go on it <laughs> Donna, well, also, I go to your movie, your movie theater. I bring a blanket. Oh, no <laughs> yeah. way, that's yes, hysterical. Bring a blanket. I think they're getting some more too. They had some for sale for a while because people get a little chilly there, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I don't know. I get so tired of the heat. I kind of enjoy it when I walk in it's and nice. I, it's nice, nice and fresh. <laughs> I'm like, 
I'm okay with this. I'm good. You know, I'll get a cup of coffee if I need to warm up, but yeah. which they sell too. But yeah, it's, it's a great place. Our theater actually has become kind of a destination within our region. It's really an, a very upscale luxury theater experience. So we have people who come from all over. We actually just did our concierge college there, which was an opportunity for our Sequoia Tourism Council to provide information to the hospitality industry about all of the offerings within our region so that our folks when you're out and about and you're eating at a restaurant you can ask you know a wait person hey how can i go find the sequoias or what is there to do in this area and people are gonna the goal is for them to be more knowledgeable mm -hmm. to what the offerings are throughout the county so yeah mm -hmm. we had a galaxy together last week and it was a lot of fun it's very Every nice. time we come to Tulare, we go, and it's fun. I mean, those seats move and do all kinds of things. It's like a whole experience, <laughs> you know. I like those seats. I'm, I could, I could do that right now. Um, I do <laughs> want to touch on the hotels because that's yes. one thing I want people to know is you have an abundance of hotel rooms of all kinds that you know for all budgets. And the one that we stayed at was right across from Cool Hand, Cool Hand Luke's. If I'm saying it, uh, the steakhouse there, yeah. it's a southwestern yeah. kind of vibe, and it's super fun for all ages and they have really good cocktails and food really good food yeah we have we're very fortunate to have um a lot of local um, brands and then we do have national brands of course um with within our community but i love also the local flavors and the various different restaurants that have great features such as rancho brazil and we also have Eden Cafe, a wonderful French cafe that we have. We have the Portuguese uh, bakery and cafe, which I know you ladies like, you and Nancy. Oh, yes. Is there. So a lot of different types of restaurants that you can go to. Plus, we have an amazing lineup of coffee houses. And every one is a little different. We opened four coffee houses within the last 12 months. Wow. They're local coffee houses. So. Wow. I think it's been so much fun in our community. So it's kind of like, okay, where am I going to get my coffee at today? And I'm who's going to put the pumpkin it's spice? Dragging. Pumpkin spice, you know, it's pumpkin that time of year. year. We yeah. have one of our um, entities that has the best lavender coffee. And Ooh, that was my first so time really of having a, like a lavender latte type of thing. Oh my gosh, it's fabulous over there. That's at the well coffee shop. Mm. So I want those people to do the art with the foam at the top. They and do I want art. Them to do Yes, yeah. but I want them to do a sequoia tree and put cinnamon because that's what it feels like for sequoias. What do you okay, think, Holly? Will... We need a sequoia coffee <laughs> or a pine that's cone. Right. There is a sequoia co there is a sequoia coffee shop right at the foot of the right in um in Kings Canyon. And it's so oh. good. It really it really is a cute, it really is super cute. Very nice. We just have we have a local coffee shop that just got opened by an 18-year-old kid here no way. in Dinuva. Oh. And we spent national, yesterday was National Coffee Day. So mm -hmm. we came in and we were like, where can we go have coffee? Brick and Stone is usually our go-to. Um, and so, but they were closed because it was Sunday. And, and, and so like we went to the coffee shop that this, the student had started and it is so good guys. And it was so great to watch him talk about what he's passionate about. It's called Ar Arcadia Coffee. And, and Ooh. he just, he, he walked you through almost like it was a wine tasting and I was, I'm, I'm just all for it. I'm all for it. <laughs> oh, I love to see young entrepreneurs. You've got to support them. I mean, that's the whole thing. I know you, you, you know, are all part of being chambers of commerce, visitor centers. I mean, that is about supporting small business, you know, and that's so important to see, um, you know, a young, you know, a young student or not a student, 18 year old going in there and saying, yeah. all right, I'm opening a business, you know. I love this. I love this. So tell us a little bit about the experience of downtown Dinuba is so charming and cute. And you've got a wonderful theater as well there. And just the downtown with the murals. Tell us a little bit about what people can expect to do for shopping and dining other than coffee, which I don't know, man, I should have there had anything coffee other than coffee meeting. anywhere that no, no but there's Wine? lots of happening in downtown Dinuba. Um, we've just done some uh, facade renovations in some of our buildings downtown and then um, we actually there were there was a, a fire in our old theater that had oh. happened in our downtown and that actually the the deconstruction of that property and now the reimagining of what that space could be um, mm -hmm. has been both tragic and beautiful at the same time mm -hmm. of talk about how our downtown's transforming 
and then making sure that that when we are having events, how we can support our local downtown businesses at the same time is something that we're all kind of thoughtfully consider as we as we create new events. Um, we have a ha Halloween downtown event and our Alta Historical District has another um, event coming up soon too. So we're trying to bring people into those spaces so they can enjoy uh, our food, our farm to table food, like California tacos is, is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing um here in Dainuba and then uh Dainuba restaurant um is under new ownership too and that's been around for forever um so we have a lot of potential happening in our mm -hmm. downtown um and then some challenges too we've got our high school is moving away from where our downtown is so it's moving mm -hmm. out of our downtown um but I think in a way that that's really brought the merchants and the the restaurant owners together in this beautiful way of talking about how that might change and shift. So what do we need to do to work together to support our downtown business owners? That's awesome. And how's the golf course doing? The golf course is great. They just rebranded yeah. uh, Ridge Creek um, uh, into uh, the patio. Um, they renovated the inside completely. So it's brand wow. new on the inside. Um, and then the patio itself is absolutely gorgeous. So they have, mm -hmm. uh, they have Friday night entertainment. And because we are in California, it does afford us the ability to have more outside um, entertainment and time outside, which I think we all appreciate. And as the weather shifts into this cooler uh, climate pattern, we're waiting on that still, but um, it does it does open it up for a nice, cool, crisp mornings like today and, and cooler evenings. And, and a glass of wine on that patio overlooking the sunset is killer. I, yeah. Yeah. That's and a, their beer and, selection is really good too. Well, hey, listen, we're going to definitely talk beer. I mean, Suzanne, we can talk beer in Visalia, right? You guys have breweries. Yeah, lots of breweries. There's a little um, growing number of um, craft breweries in the area. Um, I think throughout the county, I think there's some some fantastic new breweries. Um, Visalia created a brewery district um, in the downtown area just to the east. So there's just for me. Just for you. So lots yeah. of fun things to do there. Just kidding. That's <laughs> cool that you have a district. That's really neat. Wow. Suzanne, is so, that where the planing mill is? Is that that district? Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. Very, but, ooh, I like the plain, hmm? That's a good pizza from there. Oh, that's it's really excellent. Good. It's absolutely seriously, so good. <laughs> seriously good pizza. Like I still remember that's memorable food out of yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny because the brewery district is a specific, you know, um, section of town, but so many of the businesses have a really extensive craft beer menu that I would consider them sort of a brewery type. Um, 18 Soccer City 1852 was the, a newer, um, probably not new anymore, gosh. Um, they do... Uh, three on five on five soccer, um, hoodie soccer, but they also have a, um, a brewery where they make beer and they have a tap room and they also have a beer garden. So they have a place where food trucks pull up. And so you can grab a beer. You can maybe watch the game when there's big events like world cup, they'll have a 16 foot, um, screens that people can watch soccer games on if they're big matches. Um, so we're looking forward to that, especially with 2026, the world cup being in, um, in California, part of it. So uh, yeah, a lot of fun things, a lot of fun restaurants and and beer. They food and beer go together. <laughs> and you've got wine and food happening too. So you got to tell everybody about the upcoming taste event. Yeah. So um, October is a great time to explore this region and really kind of see the sort of foods um, uh, or the agriculture that we grow that turns into the food you eat in these restaurants. But downtown Visalia hosts a taste of downtown food fair um, on October the 8th. You get a ticket and all the restaurants in the downtown area serving up wine and, and food. You can wander the streets and taste a little bit of everything. So that's a really fun, really fun event. Um, on October 19th, we continue the tasting theme with the Taste the Arts Festival, a day-long festival where artists from around the county gather together. Um, you can watch them do their craft, whatever that might be. Um, you can buy their art, of course, um, but it's a really great um, exploration of the arts in, in Tulare County. So that's on October 19th for Taste the Arts Festival. Cool. Everyone visit Visalia.com is the website to go to for Visalia and Dinuba is dinubachamber.com. What is your date for your car show? Well, our car show is originally scheduled October 19th, but there's some transitioning happening in our park in that area. So 
we may be, there's a couple dates that we're looking at to move the car show. So stay okay. tuned on that, but hopefully that happens and, soon. And follow your Facebook uh, pages too. I always think, you know, for folks to follow social media is a really good way. Um, I wanted to go, Holly, I know, isn't there a fee-free day coming up for the parks? That's right. On November 11th, Veterans Day is a fee-free day for all. Um, also, I think it's pretty cool to let veterans know that there is a military lifetime pass available. So while we are celebrating our veterans on November 11th, they are also welcome to come to the parks for free any time of year. They can get that pass online. Didn't it just get signed back in um, that the fourth grade program just got signed back into place for next year, I, I believe, if I, or am I getting that twirled around with another program? There's you know, so many I didn't cool know that it had gone away. Parks. I thought that it no, had not still been it, it gets renewed every year Got or it. something. So it's still there. So the fourth still grade. Available. Wanna, yep. Yeah. Tell people about the fourth grade program because it's really cool yeah. for families. So if you have a fourth grader, you can get a pass for the year. That'll get you into all of the national parks. And so that's also available. And not only are these passes available online and you can see the description of them there, but you can also just get one when you come in through the entrance station too. So you don't have, if you don't have time to prepare or if it's, you know, you don't have access to the internet, just ask a park ranger when you come into the entrance and you can get one here too. Yeah, and when we say national parks, it's and that also means national monuments. It's anything underneath uh, nps.gov, exactly. and that's nps.gov forward slash s e k i for that mm -hmm. website. Um, I, before you all go, um, and and wait, you know, real quick, Holly, some of the programs, the park ranger programs, that people are always asking me, do we get to hang out with park rangers? I said, I'm sure mm -hmm. you can. Um, so how how do people get to hang out with park rangers? Yeah, so park rangers are available in a couple of places. Um, you'll get everyone gets to see a friendly park ranger when they come through the entrance. They're at our visitor centers, although um, some of our visitor centers are closing for the season. Um, so just keep in mind that different times of the year have different things available and all of that information is online. Mm -hmm. um, but also we have ranger led programs that are really amazing and those are posted on our calendar. Um, so on our website, there's just plan your trip and look at our calendar and it has a list of all of the park ranger programs that are available. And those are really neat. That's cool. The naturalist walks and you really get to understand what you're looking at. The birds and, you know, fall is a great time. All the bird watchers are like, yay, fall is here. There's all kinds of movement happening with birds. So it's a good time to get out there. And um, and I love the plan your trip the part of that of the Park Service yeah. website. It helps you with road closures because things like that happen. Um, it also helps you in regards to the kinds of hikes you want to do if they're easy and um, for me, just put extra easy because, you know, now that I'm over 50, you know, I need extra easy and or just roll me down the hill, <laughs> you know, or up the hill and down the hill. But um, no, it, it really does give you an idea of what you want to do and, and keep up with the park website. That's always really important. But I wanted to touch on a couple other communities. Donette, do you want to tell us about Springville? Because that's near Sequoia National Forest. Yes, and I would uh, definitely love to tell you they have their annual Apple Festival event okay. coming up in October, and it's a wonderful historic event that's been held for, I can't even remember how many years, probably decades upon decades, and you get some fabulous apple pies, of course, because you're going to get a lot of things apple there, but they have a lot of vendors, uh, which you'll find both food and crafters. And everything is handcrafted. That's one of their rules there. So you're not going to find something that, you know, is merchandise, you know, coming from wherever. It's going to be something that a handcrafter has painstakingly spent time on designing. So I think that's part of the charm of the festival of many of our festivals, actually, in our region. And Springville is beautiful up there in the foothills. So just a great place to go up and enjoy the day. And then we also have in our community of Exeter, they have their fall festival that is happening. They have scarecrows around town. That's cool. Uh, they do a huge event um, in their community uh, with this festival. You know, in the park, they have vendors. They have vendors in downtown. So another um, opportunity to go out and to experience the community itself, which has over 30 murals in their community and also a lot of farm to table restaurants too. So you'll find a lot to do when you come into that community of Exeter. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have um, events happening in the community of Porterville and Porterville has Pioneer Days, 
which cool. is a celebration of history and has a big rib cook-off. They also have downtown events and uh, crafter booths as well and food booths. And then, of course, um, for that community of Porterville, uh, they um, really put out the best show as far as a parade that I've ever seen. It's the mm -hmm. Veterans Day Parade. There are usually well over a hundred and some entries in that parade. You see all kinds of historic equipment too, military equipment, which is really cool to look at. You'll also see the new as well, and you'll see the regular community booths that come out, but just a fabulous a ceremony that happens throughout that day. They also have a band festival that takes place. So a cool. great time to spend uh, time there in Porterville and uh, I don't know. There's nothing more to me better than that opportunity to really re recognize veterans and their service and to have that opportunity to enjoy the parade and to see all the pride. You'll see veterans that are uh, guests just there watching along the parade route, all decked out um, in their clothing, being very patriotic to the country they have served. And then, of course, those that are in the parade. So I encourage people to come out. Mm. such a wonderful um, event and just huge well they have one of the biggest veterans day parades in the state of california so and and it's right off of highway 62 right which is is it 62 65. yeah yes. 65 yes. i was going yeah. back and forth with that in my head I'm like, five and 190 what? so I and, mean, and that's the all american highway yes. all american all american highway. city highway that also includes the community of Lindsay, another quaint community um within our region we also have the community of wood lake you know as well that has a lot of uh, special amenities within their community. They've got some special events coming up. So, you know, together, um, Sequoia Tourism Council covers all of Tulare County. So and that's three rivers. I don't want to leave them out because oh that's goodness. your your gateway community into Sequoia mm -hmm. National Park. And that's a lot of, it's like an art community. You know, all of you guys have these wonderful little downtowns and full of charm. But, you know, three rivers, it really goes along the river. So you find all these little shops and, you know, there's ice cream shops, candy shops, restaurants, you name it. Um, it's a really cool uh, community. Uh, Suzanne, do you know if they still do that first Saturday arts events in three rivers because I, I think so mm -hmm. okay that's a good thing to check out and then um in closing you know I'm going to ask you each what is your ideal day no work for any of you because I know you all work so hard but you get to take a full day off no answering the phone unless you really want to a full day off just for fun in Tulare County so you don't have to travel too far but what are you going to do to really celebrate fall so let's start with you Holly what are you uh, what are you wanting to do for a fall day off? Yeah, well, I think my fall day definitely starts with some good coffee. And there are a couple of coffee <laughs> shops in the town of Three Rivers as well, yes. right outside of our parks. Um, and then honestly, I'm going to try to get to Mineral King before the road closes because I just love Mineral King. It's kind of getting towards the end of when you're able to access that beautiful valley and go for a nice hike. And we don't answer the phone, not only because we don't want to, but because you can't, because there's no <laughs> cell phone service in the park. So it's an absolutely perfect reason to just disconnect, go out and be in nature and just enjoy all of the sights and sounds. Awesome. Mineral King. Yeah. So we should touch on that Mineral King and then also Kings Canyon at, at one point closed because if weather starts in winter, starts to sneak in and can come in whenever it wants to as well. So everyone should watch the website for those closures or do you have like hard dates of when they close? Yeah. Um, so the roads, I think Mineral King Road is like the end of October, Cedar Grove, same thing, end of October. But yeah, keep your eyes open for those road, the road conditions um, has the openings and closures listed those are updated um in a very timely way so you can see what's available um but and, yeah and, the rest and of the people park, yeah you're open still the parks are still the open. rest of the yeah. park there's still so much to see so don't worry if you can't make it up to mineral king i actually just found a cool little hike that i had not been on before Ooh. in the giant forest pro tip there's this hazelwood nature trail that's um it, it's just from a pullout right after the giant forest museum so if you're looking for something that's a pretty it's a pretty gentle hike and it's just got so many sequoias just a beautiful variety of sequoias that you're immersed in and it's a really nice hike you can go as far as 
um, you know, few miles as you want to go, depending on what you're feeling like that day. And it's a really quiet, peaceful hike. There's blue jays on that trail. I've been on that trail. It's pretty. It's nice. It's it perfect. Is, it's it's perfect. It is. And it's it, woodpeckers, blue jays, all of them are there. Um, we were talking about Veterans Day. Um, one thing I wanted to give people a heads up for in December, um, you have a special event. Uh, you've got really like an actual shrine, a military shrine, I was going to say. Um, right. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, so yeah, we have our trek to tree and then um, we do have the only living shrine that is dedicated to our service members who gave their lives in service to our country. And so um, that's the general grant tree and it, we do a really nice ceremony for it. And I highly recommend if you can make it out there, sometimes there's snow and it's really cool and it's just a nice honor to be a part of that. Yeah, uh, everyone stay tuned for that. I know we'll be back next month with all the holiday events, but just want to give people a heads up because, you know, people travel, travel from far and wide to get to Sequoias because you guys are a bucket list destination for thousands and thousands of people. So uh, always good to give everyone a little notice. So Donette, what are you doing for a fall day? So, you know, I am going to search out those pop-up events and do my shopping cool. there and support <laughs> those local crafters. And I'm going to hit one of the coffee shops. I don't know which one because in my community, again, there's so many. So I might be pretty hyped up if I... I don't know that <laughs> coffee from the Portuguese bakery. I'm telling you, I was walking oh. with hair out all day long. I'm like, yeah, we oh, can yeah. do anything, anything. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great stop for breakfast to get your warm, sweet mm. bread and your coffee and then go out on your way. And I, I really do love the events. I like to meander through and just really admire the work of the, the crafters. So I'm going to go out and, and just enjoy and kind of immerse myself in events and activities and probably pop in someplace for lunch or eat at one of the vendors and just mm. enjoy the community. I, I want to go have a taco inside the airplane. That is true too. Yeah. We have the flying taco in Tulare. And mm -hmm. um, it's a day I can get into the um, Ag Ventures Learning Center and the Antique Farm Equipment Museum. We have that at International Agri Center. I enjoy that too. I enjoy taking my granddaughters. That's fun Aww. for them to get to go through those stations of learning about ag. And they never get tired of the little fake farmer's market for kids to play in there. I like, I like to different play activities. Yeah, I know we like to play in there too. So anyway, <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy. And I love going to our neighboring communities too, because I always discover something different um, about yeah. whichever community it is that um, I'm visiting. I've lived in two of the our other communities within our region, and I still discover new things all the time. There is so much to do. Tulare County is massive, man. You really are. So Heath, what about you? What do you want to do for a fall? I know coffee's involved, right? <laughs> so yeah, no, I think that um, I, I, pre I pretty much have it down to at least two coffee shops in each of our communities that I can go to. Heath and have is always day. awake, basically. So, <laughs> yeah. so um, I think I would love to do a coffee tour. Like I would like that just Ooh. feels like the coolest thing that if I could start like at Brick and Stone or Arcadia and then move to Component and move around the, the county, I think that that would be that would be super cool because Ooh, we're so going to have to do a coffee show would be so great. Oh, let's do it. And coffee and brew. So we could do anything brewed. In Tulare County. No doubt. <laughs> okay, I, I need to come back now. Nancy and I need to change our plans. <laughs> it's time to go. It's time to go west. It's time to go west for sure. Suzanne, what about you for fall? What's your fall experience? Well, nothing says fall to me like going to Vossler Farms and the maze, the corn maze that they have there. That's so um, iconically fall to me. You can go through the little pumpkin patch with the kids. You can, um, you know, just enjoy vendors. You can also do the corn maze, which is a lot of fun if you're not afraid of getting lost. So I think that's a really fun way to, um, I don't know, celebrate fall by going out there. It's all things, all things fall right now. Well, just be careful because there are the, the children of the corn in those mazes. <laughs> I need people to rescue me. I get lost in those things. So <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't because they're waiting for you. <laughs> I'm so nice. I'm so nice. Everyone again, discover the sequoias.com is the main website to go and you'll find all the different communities, the parks, the forest linked from there. Uh, that's where to go. And I do encourage you to follow everyone's Facebook pages because they keep up to date in Instagram as well. There's always something going on and uh, they tell you everything. So thank you so much, ladies. Have a happy start to fall, y'all. 
<laughs> I can say that while I'm here. Take Thank care. you so much. Lisa. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us here on Big Blend Radio's California Sequoia Country Show. New episodes air every first Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. You can keep up with the show at BigBlendRadio.com, but also plan your Tulare County escape. Go to DiscoverTheSequoias.com.